Hello and welcome to our show. My name is Nat Rich and we are here at the I Am Sound new studios. This is the first time we've ever been here and uh, we're very excited. We've got new kits, we've got new microphones, got new location and we're raring to go. So I hope we get this right. And uh, we have a wonderful guest joining us today. And his name is actually, I'm going to pronounce this correctly because I have notes. I'm not the greatest on pronunciations. Wissam Bustani. Did I get it right? Yeah, Wissam Bustani. Wissam, no, you say it with more flair. Wissam Bustani. Yeah? It sounds like it's got flair because it's foreign. Because it's you, you could, you've got flair. <laughs> so Wissam has been given to me today by the lovely Bryony, who's actually here in the studio. And Bryony told me that I needed to interview Wissam because of his amazing flair and the way that he does things. And um, you are actually a solo flautist, is that right? That's correct. Yes, there we go, I'm getting it right. And I've Conductor got my notes. now as well. What, sorry? Conductor now as Conductor well. Conductor as well. You could have conducted this whole thing to make sure we get it right. Hopefully we do. Um, so the music style that you play is Baroque, Classical, Romantic, Contemporary, and you improvise quite a lot. Yeah, the that's improvisation. right. Amazing. Pretty much uh, all round music rather than focusing on one genre. This is a man after my own heart. I love it. So we have something to talk about today, which is being in the now. So I read a little bit in the very now. I read a little bit, but I don't like to read too much when I interview people. I like to get to know people on air. Uh, otherwise, I feel things can get a little bit contaminated or I think there's too much there I need to talk about. And you are a man after my own heart because you have a method called love that you use when you work with music. And um, I'd love you to be able to explain a little bit more about that and kind of how that came around. Okay. Thanks for having me, and it's exciting to be able to express myself on your new platform. Uh, I Am Sound has a wonderful uh, vision behind it. I'm excited to see it grow. So um, the method called love is, is, is a title I've given to my approach to living life, making music, uh, motivating students to get the best out of the moment, their potential. So I really feel that too much of institutionalized learning is reading-based, mm. information-based. You're supposed to uh, put down the quote where, who said what? And you're almost patronized if you have an original feeling. Mm. So um, I really believe that there's one thing that focuses all our lives into the best part of who we are mm -hmm. and it's that part of us that's able to love so if you learn to listen to that love and work with it and channel it into any area that you want to make better in your life it serves as a wonderful motor for for the whole process mm -hmm. and makes you what i call an independent learner rather than copying tradition or copying you the way your teacher did it. Mm -hmm. You start to see the value of your own passion and how to channel it. So that's basically it. Nice. There's so many people out there at the moment, especially who are going to be watching this, that are musically inclined yeah. and the idea of not being good enough and not and comparing yourself. We live in a really strong environment of comparison at the moment, whether mm. it's social media or whatever we do. With music, I I don't play any instruments yet. Okay. Um, apparently, I am the instrument. Apparently, I get told because I used to sing. I haven't sung for quite a long time. And my own journey into that has been looking at, you know, feeling I need to feel ready to do so. And I've been missing what I call the joy in my life. I've been very business focused, building this and doing a lot of other things. And it dawned on me just before Christmas about bringing that unique part into music. And I think a lot of people forget that there's a, a really a deeper part of themselves that's creating. They kind of create from their head. Mm -hmm. And your entire structure is to kind of bring yourself into the heart. So for somebody out there at the moment that has a similar thing to me, what would be your first way or the first thing to say to them to get them from their head into their heart? How do they come from that space when they're trying to create music? That's a very good question, you know. Um, first of all, we, we, we're talking about music as uh, a discipline, mm -hmm. uh, a profession, an aspiration. But I consider music also as a metaphor, mm -hmm. uh, unrelated to sound, production of sound, a metaphor for the spiritual inside us, the loving inside us. Mm -hmm. And how to access that 
is really it's about learning to listen to life, to people, um, to to your motivations, and um, there is an enemy to that, uh, which is uh, structure sometimes, and also another enemy is uh, when we start to repeat ourselves and we start to go through the motions, mm -hmm. then actually living the spark of what ignites. And, and even if you like the concept of love, it doesn't mean you actually do love in every moment. Um, and that requires a very um, uh, um, honest appraisal of where you're at mm -hmm. in the moment. And I think one can feel that if you are judging yourself and, and your integrity uh, in the moment when you're practicing, when you're performing, you can tell when you're not switched on. Mm -hmm. And um, where that you asked where that comes from, it's it's a combination of um, the past experiences. I lived through a war in Lebanon, and in a way, war is uh, the synonym of love. It's, it's not synonym. Synonym, anti-word. What's an what's it? Antonym. Antonym. Apparently, from the background, we've got antonym. Yeah, I, didn't, thanks, see, I didn't know what thanks, that meant, Brini. so you're teaching us both. Thank yeah. you, Brinny. So <laughs> it's the opposite of what love is. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, zoning in on the moment and really listening to the impulse of that moment and participating with, with real flow. You, 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 you feel it in your whole body. Mm -hmm and the way your fingers and your lips and the way you breathe and the way the sound comes out, you can hear it. I heard you talking on, your, on about vibrations. Mm -hmm. These are real vibrations mm -hmm. um, that come to the surface and we need to hear them. Quite often, we're oblivious to that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's fine. But if you want to become consistent you need to be conscious of what's working mm -hmm. and what's not working and that's what i love about practicing now um one thing we do when we're practicing an instrument is we repeat now you why do you repeat to make something better there's nothing wrong with that you consolidate you repeat again you consolidate more mm -hmm. but after a certain point if you repeat to the point where you're repeating too much, the heart starts to die on you. Mm. So a very, very important understanding of why we repeat things, why we consolidate things, but also to keep a spirit of adventure and risk-taking and not knowing where you're going, mm -hmm. because that's the cutting edge of your living moment. And without that, even if you have a perfect performance, it's stillborn. It's dead. There's no energy behind There's it. There's no yeah. energy behind it. Yeah. So I like to, tie, to walk that tightrope between memory, mm -hmm. which is how you consolidate things, and improvisation, which is learning to deal with uh, the evolving moment. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful. This is such a lesson in life itself. It's not just related to music. Well, that's why I love music, because and it teaches me all these things yeah. about life, about me. Without it, I feel I'm nothing yeah. really. Well, not nothing, but not as nothing close to what I could be. <laughs> yeah, this is beautiful. There's, there's something that you said then that reminds me some of the things I teach using magic and logic. And it's really important that we establish both. And a lot of people have a connection to magic and they're quite floaty and they're, they're not very grounded. And then there's some people who have a, a connection to logic and they don't like anything that floats. They don't like anything that's magic, but they, they are missing the fun. And I think the harmony is to be able to bring those two together and then obviously to bring that into whatever it is you do, whether that's making cupcakes or, you know, making music. But there's something I feel that when you're talking as well, which I've noticed is you bring a smile when you're talking about music and your face is lighting up and there's a there's a, a way that people can see when someone's enjoying themselves. And I guess I don't spend a lot of time at classical concerts myself. I've been to a couple. Um, but there's you can tell the energy on the stage. And the one thing that I did watch, because I thought I'll have a sneak preview at the, um, at the information that Bryony sent me and I watched one YouTube video and you were talking and you were just as, sorry, you came on stage and there was this point where the vibrations that you were talking about is like you were feeling 
what everyone was playing and I could tell and you were looking around and you were feeling into it and you were feeling for those vibrations and I feel that there's something that not many people know how to feel that essence and it's, it's quite a difficult space to get into because they're like vibrations don't really know so how would you what's a good example of someone being able to feel that essence do you think what way of in you other people or in, yourself? in other people because if you can recognize it in someone else you can then familiarize yourself with it as well it works the other way too mm. if you recognize it in yourself it's easier to see it in other people it's mm -hmm. uh, it's it's um it's the starting point and ending point of any conversation mm -hmm. um it involves listening and talking now of course when you're in a conversation you know exactly what you want to say Mm. But if you don't listen to the energy coming back at you, what you're saying is just going sideways. It's not, it's not hitting where it needs to hit. Mm -hmm. um, so listening is an incredibly important part. Um, listening to the energy that you are um, putting your, your energy into. Um, is like a light that 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 enters into the room, mm. and in order to do that, you need to be confident and you need to know your stuff. So, if I know the notes I'm playing, if I really consolidate it, that mm -hmm. frees me up to be able to open to the moment. Mm. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I'm clutching at notes and I can't liberate myself beyond the notes. Mm. Uh, that's why. Um, uh, memorizing is so important. Memorizing meaning consolidation to the point where you know something by heart. Mm -hmm. It just flows without you consciously making it happen anymore. Mm -hmm. And the twin brother of that is improvisation, which is the total opposite. You throw caution to the wind. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's coming next, but everything you do has to be um, intense, loving, convincing mm -hmm. right with the moment so uh, you have one leg I stand on an improvisation and the other leg I stand on is this um, joy in in not knowing what the outcome is going to be and ironically enough I think I'm not a scientist but I know that um, if you measured my brain say playing something with music mm -hmm measured what the activity in my brain playing something from memory and then measured the activity in my brain while I'm improvising, mm -hmm. it wouldn't surprise me that the needle would go like a thousand times mm -hmm. to the extreme yeah. when you're improvising because you're alert, you're ready for anything and you're thinking a thousand times more quickly mm -hmm. and you're controlling the instrument. Yeah. So if you can, if you can learn that, to improvise, to go with the flow in life, uh, uh, then you, you really are ready for anything. Mm. Uh, so when you do prepare, you get the advantage of being able to shape uh, the direction of a piece. Um, and th that's what, what excites me about, about the method called love. I mean, I love preparation and I love, love seeing what happens without preparation. Mm. Both, like you said, create this... Um, very good um, uh, balance mm. between two very important aspects of learning and, of course, giving. Yeah, it's beautiful. There's a there's like an alchemy. I think that's the whole process of alchemy is when you can blend the two together and you get something better from the from you know from both of them. There's a a really interesting moment for me when I I teach meditation and I do meditations with different people. When I'm speaking, and, and I can tell it within myself, when I'm speaking from my head and just letting people ground and getting them into a space, there's a different energy than when I'm speaking from my heart. And the space between my words gets sure. longer and deeper and people ground. And then, you know, I can see it. I can see the body relax. I can see them and I feel it within myself. And I guess that comes obviously in music as well. I feel that you've actually just set as a challenge as well, actually, talking about we could probably get you on a brain scan. I think that would be a great video, it's a piece of content. <laughs> well, not much of a brain there. <laughs> it would be like 0 0.1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're definitely not doing mine. But I think that would be really an interesting project to do. And this is why I don't like to structure things too much. I, I really... 
for me, I work better in the flow. I always have. And I, you know, people say to me, oh, when you're talking, you know, it really flows. And how do you do that? And I'm like, it's like when you meet someone in the street, it's exactly the same. It's just sometimes people are watching you. And I try to stay in that. But I feel with music, there's so much inner judgment that comes, isn't it? And it comes, that's when some of the best music is made out of trauma as well and out of people's pain because they really bring their all to it. So if there was someone out there that regardless of whether it was DJing or whether they were learning an instrument or singing, if someone's got that pain story, if they've got something behind them that really is heavy, that they, they you know, they're the expression of at the moment, how would you, what kind of advice would you give to someone who had that sort of behind them and, and where would you go with that? Uh, it's delicate to talk about, I suppose. You can't, if someone's suffering pain or failure or whatever it is, mm-hmm. and you tell them it's going to be all right, you're patronizing them. But actually, if you, uh, if you go through many experiences in your life, you start to see patterns in your life. Mm-hmm. Once you see a pattern you're starting to understand something about who you are, how you behave uh, in response to things. And I can say without any doubt that it's through the pain and the failures that I've learned the most things in my life. Mm -hmm. And it's also true that you learn from your successes too, Uh, but you remember your failures more. Um, and they affect you. And we do judge, like you said, we ju- do judge ourselves. And that comes early on from kindergarten onwards, where we're given a reward for something good we do. Mm. And then we're given a, a good grade for that. And that pattern is set over 20 years of education. So you do well, you get a good grade. You don't make mistakes, you get an excellent grade. Uh, And and we carry that with us. Uh, And I think it takes a lot of uh, courage, um, confidence, a a certain degree of arrogance to say, stop, I'm going to make the mistakes I need to make because that's part of the journey. And and I would love a, a system. Well, I don't like any kind of system because it doesn't, I think, no system is ever going to work for everyone. Mm-hmm. But wouldn't it be great if a, a part of a grade given to a student was for the risks they were taking? Love that. Unconditional yeah, on yeah. whether the risk pays off or not. So if someone, for instance, uh, decides to play a piece from memory in an exam, even though it's not a requirement in the exam, mm-hmm. you reward them for the courage of taking a stand because that's almost more important mm-hmm. than doing well. Yeah. Um, uh, so I think we carry a lot of subconscious negative uh, teachings mm-hmm. with us that block our self-esteem, that block our courage, that block our ability to see um, the adventure of life as unconditionally something that can teach us, mm-hmm. irrespect of, of, of success or failure. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I'd say to people is, is take a deep breath, look at what happened, why it happened, and remember the, not just the result, but what led up to the result. Because in a year's time, whether it's a relationship or, or, or an instrument or the same passage you're playing, you carry the memory of that and you have more options in your life. Mm. Um, so I think we can't help but learn. And it's uh, uh, many people who don't make mistakes early on in their life suddenly make a mistake in, uh, later on in life and have no idea how to deal with it yeah. because they haven't practiced it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the story of a child prodigy, Yeah. for instance. T- you know, total facility, everything works for them, and then suddenly they make one mistake in their teenage years and all their confidence comes crashing down. Mm. Much healthier to grow up with 
learning how to deal with failure mm -hmm. uh, and and building up this kind of uh, inner um, resilience resilience yeah. is a good word yeah. yeah there's a um when you're talking i'm thinking about like there's so many things going on in the world right now yeah. the world is uh, at large, one of the craziest places we could have ever imagined. And it's it seems like it's getting worse in places and then better in others. And it, this approach that you have, that you've obviously adopted for yourself and for your, you know, your music style, how do you think if everyone was listening to this and, and they had, you know, if we gave them the opportunity to, to change and to do something different this year and to adopt something that you were saying, what do you think effect would have on society if everybody started doing something creative? Like, do you think that the creative process could change and save humanity? Do you think it could have a, a, a big effect? Do you think there's something else that we're missing that we need? Is there, because obviously you're living this and I feel like there's something we can all learn from in many ways, but how would you see helping people at the moment? It's difficult, you know, another great question. And there's no really quick answer to it um actually there is and the answer is yes mm. <laughs> good but when you're talking to people who've had family killed or raped or murdered or disadvantaged not just once or twice but over decades in a war situation i come from lebanon and my mom came from palestine so uh, and um Ever since my childhood, I've seen the, the results of war, of violence, of uh, intolerance, of um, judging people, of religion, organized religion, of corrupt politics, of the arms trade. You go back to Lebanon or, and you talk to people about love. Uh, you're talking about to people who, who quite often have been broken it's easier for me to go from here and uh, it can be patronizing mm -hmm. yeah but having said that because i'm not drowning in in the problems there that's exactly why i can say it mm -hmm. and love is something when people see um the the, the energy and see you rise to to what's best in you that gives hope to people. Yeah. So if you see someone uh, gr uh, grabbing the fire of life and embracing life with the love that is due to this miracle we call life, uh, that helps other people feel they can do the same. Because one thing I can tell you, if I shut down my light the world is a slightly darker place. Mm. Ooh, I like that. Oh, I think That's, to, and I, I don't mean that. Quote you on that one. I, I don't it. mean that in a, in a kind of, oh, I've got everything. Uh, I, I need to save the world. I just mm -hmm. mean that. What are we, if not ourselves? What can we give to life, mm -hmm. if not ourselves and our love? We cry. don't have any, anything real mm. else to give. And yet that's sometimes considered as immodest or big-headed or self-indulgent mm. in today's society. Um, so I think it takes a lot of courage to, to put your heart on your sleeve, to say what needs to be said in a loving way, not in a confrontational way. Mm -hmm. And we do live because of the internet and, and social media in very polarized societies where anything you can say can offend anyone. Uh, but I still have the faith that it's not just what you say mm -hmm. that matters, but how you say it. Totally, yeah. Uh, and I think you, you stand, you stand to, to um, get the right energy in response when, mm -hmm. when you give that energy. I think the energy as well, that where you come from, if if you're trying to deliver a message in some way and you come from a place of frustration, they're going to receive your frustration. And it's like an integrity, like when I was talking about integrity before, 
for me, I've learned to come from a place, if I'm going to try and help someone or I want something to change, I need to come from a change within myself to be able to break into that environment. And it's like Einstein says, you can't solve a problem from the same level of consciousness in which it was created. So we always have to come a little bit above and, and out of ourselves to communicate something differently. I feel that you, you know, you can do that with music in many ways. You can, you can be in a higher space and bring that to a dance floor. You can bring that to a performance, but also with your words and with integrity, it's about if you want something to change, you have to be that change. You know, when people say you have to be the change in the world, but there's a, there's a part within myself, within how I have you know, learned within myself, my voice has changed dramatically. I used to have a very strong accent. I lived up north. And the more I've gone on my spiritual journey, the more I've gone on this path, the slower I've become, the more I've done my meditation. And I'm, I'm not trying to change how I speak. I just speak completely differently. It's I've kind of refined the delivery of the way I talk. I used to be very harsh and I wouldn't necessarily always be wrong, but when I would deliver it, it would be like hitting someone over the head with it. And it was very unstable for a, for a while when I was talking to people and having conversations and giving feedback or they'd ask me a question and I'd want to be honest but the way I delivered it was like a slap so I try a and deliver bomb. things yeah exactly <laughs> so I try and deliver now on a cushion is the best way I can describe it I, I try to talk to people as if we were sat on a cushion and I'm giving you a, a lovely cushion to hold and it's it's not something it's something there but it's not going to hit you over the head and if it does it's going to be soft but the way that I think is important at the moment is using music and using, cre using creativity. There's a point. So for us here at I am sound, there's a, there's a process that we're, we're going on and we're, we've got a membership. We've created this membership to be able yeah. to inspire people, to help them to learn about sound, energy, vibration in a very deep way. There's the ancient history of sound. There's the, the complexities around it. There's the science, there's the quantum physics. There's a real, the whole bag is we're, what we want to teach people. And we've come up with an idea of creating a game around this as well, to be able to inspire people, to connect with different challenges and to connect with one another, to be able to go on a learning journey that is really inspirational or something quite different. And obviously this is an on the spot question, but you know, I like the flow, but the idea just came to me when you were talking then, um, is if you, if you were to set a challenge for a family at home, for example, and, or a group of people that were living together, and we said to you, right, we, we need a challenge from you. What do you think these people could do in relationship to music? Um, a challenge that would inspire them to connect in a way. It could be something that you teach in your lessons. It could be something that you've already got from the past. But what kind of challenge do you think would be quite fun for people to, to experience music in a unique way? It's a little bit difficult. It's a very, very, very broad question. Mm -hmm. It depends surely on the family and the people there. Do you think it depends on the family and the people there? Or do you think, because this is the other thing I've been thinking about setting challenges and I've been thinking about the way of doing it is, do we say, oh, it depends on each person playing or do we set something that they wouldn't usually do that we want them to go up to? So, yes. you know, to, to take that step into a different space of creativity that to rise them up out of the TV seats. Well, know? the thing is, um, we all, each of us have... Things in, in our makeup as people that come naturally to us mm -hmm. and other things that don't come naturally to us. And we naturally gravitate towards what makes us feel comfortable, mm -hmm. which is great. It's, it's part of knowing who you are and what your, your potential is based on. Yeah. But if you push too far into that direction, the very thing that, that gives you confidence and um, the ability to carry yourself well becomes your prison. Mm, your comfort zone. Yeah. Mm. So uh, I think it's up to each person, and this can be an eight-year-old, it can be a 70-year-old, mm. uh, though this, the same lessons apply. Um, knowing who you are, what makes you tick, and what what other things fill you with anxiety or make you feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. in certain situations. And um, I believe in working on the things that make you feel good, but every once in a while, poking the phobia, mm -hmm. poking at it, yeah. and, and expanding 
yourself. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised what silly things come up. Uh, I'll give you an example. Phone calls. I dread. I hate phone calls. Okay. I, for years, was hiding behind emails. You know, uh, so... Uh, Why do you hate phone calls? Uh, maybe just I got used to emails and mm -hmm. me measuring my words and being able to formulate the words properly. And phone calls means you have You're to live the in the moment. Mm -hmm. and, you know. um, so uh, I know I have to do something, but I carry on avoiding that for one day, two days, three days, a week. And who are you kidding? It's bugging me. It's a, it's annoying me, and it's making me anxious. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I pick up the phone and do it, and poop, it's gone. And then when I go back to practicing, I practice with renewed energy because mm -hmm. I've popped the bubble. I've 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 released anxiety. The anxieties come f in all shapes and forms, mm -hmm. um, and they're part of the the journey. Of, of kind of discovering how to mold your, how to shape your journey forward, mm -hmm. um, navigating your, your strong points, your weak points. Um, so I think if a family was, uh, uh, if, for instance, a child had never played without r reading the music in front of them, mm -hmm. I'd set them that, why don't you play something without, without the safety net? Mm -hmm. Or if another person has never improvised before, Try that and um, get them used to um, um, uh, taking the risk, being willing to fall on their faces, and then a moment later discovering what the hell was that fear all yeah, about anyway? They're still alive and they haven't died yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's only made me stronger. Mm. Um, and I think this is why I said I hesitated. Uh, it could be something else. Mm -hmm. you were you're talking about a family setting challenges. I think just learning to listen mm. uh, to our strengths and weaknesses and our anxieties and learning how to creatively work through those issues, understanding them. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, you, it could be tension in a muscle. It could be the way you blow. It could be some discomfort. Becoming aware of it and learning to see it as a challenge and then eventually as, a, as a, an opening into understanding an aspect of how you do things that you didn't understand yesterday. Mm -hmm. And what is the enemy suddenly becomes your friend because anything that teaches you something becomes your teacher, becomes mm. your friend. Mm. So the things that we fear are not necessarily our enemy. They are the next lesson in disguise, you know, mm. and it's up to us to invite these moments into our life instead of trying to submerge them, hide them. Mm. Nice. Yeah. And if there was a piece of music, like for example, if we said we set a challenge from you and there was the challenge was simply to sit with the speakers on loud, with the whole family, and listen and then engage afterwards about how it made them feel. If there was a piece of music that we could get them to play, what would be a good piece of music to get a family to, to absorb and then to communicate afterwards? If there's something that you could recommend. Uh, I couldn't because <laughs> all music has the potential for that. It's like Ooh, saying I like, like one it. person over another. Mm -hmm. The point is that every person is unique and lovable in some way. Mm, beautiful. And to say I like this composer more than that, uh, again, it's like comparing oranges with apples. Where do you begin? <laughs> the whole point is that all have something in common, mm. which is the miracle of life and imagination and uh, uh, something that communicates itself in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And um, when you learn to appreciate that, and, and, and it's hard. How do you learn to appreciate that? You decide what you want to see in life. It's not like you see everything for what it is. 
anything that you look at in life, you're seeing it from your perspective, from your vision, from your background, from your phobias, from your joys, from your education. And uh, you make a decision in your mind about what, I mean, I, I could see this is a table. Yeah, it's a table. Or I could look at where this cable, table came from, what it took to grow the tree for it, and then the, uh, the, the, the energy it took to form it into a table. And uh, so what you see is totally up to your imagination and what it is that you want to see. Yeah? When I look at war, I see the downfall of humankind. But some people believe that war is the only way out of, of a certain problem. Mm. Which is and I suppose they, there's a reason for that. Yeah, this is pretty much all yeah. they've seen. So I think that, that, uh, that, that um, the way you look at things is, uh, uh, is the driving force of what you're going to take from that experience. Mm -hmm. It's not the experience itself. Um, uh, you know the expression the eye uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder yes yeah. of course beauty is in itself there mm -hmm. but to a very large extent it takes the beholder to make the decision to acknowledge that beauty mm -hmm. or to look or to ignore it yeah and I think we often forget that part mm -hmm. um this, this duality in life, I was thinking early on about what you were saying um, about the reasons why you, you, what you're trying to achieve with I am sound. and Trust is another big word. Yeah. And for many, many years, I always felt that people didn't trust me. Why do they always misunderstand what I do? Either they think I'm, think I'm big-headed because I'm a soloist and He's not better than anyone else. Why should he feel like that? Or what are, what are we Sam's motives for saying this or doing that? And about six, seven years ago, I had the shock revelation of my life that it was me who didn't trust other people. Yeah. And it had never occurred to me that it was up to me to take the first step, to trust that other people wouldn't misunderstand me. Mm. Yeah. And that was like taking a whole weight off my shoulders, because you can do, you can you you can, uh, well you can change anything about yourself, you can't change everything about other people though. Mm. So the first step yourself living the, the change yourself yeah. is the strongest step you can take when it comes to building trust between people. Mm -hmm. You don't wait for someone to trust you. You give them something to trust. Yeah. I can totally relate to what you're saying. There's a, I have a really strong connection. I, I have faith in God and I have, I used to be very uncomfortable about saying that. I used to, you know, feel a little bit shy and people used to say, oh, you mean the universe? Do you mean source? Uh, they would try and change the words that I'd use to fit their own narrative sure. in their head because it makes it feel com more comfortable for them. And, uh, you know, I, it's not something I don't need to go and preach. I don't need to go, you know, screaming you know around what I feel but my faith in God has become stronger and stronger and stronger as as it's been proven to me time and time again whenever I surrender and I hand things over and I'm like I can't do this one mate take it for me and I have this little conversation things come that improve my life you know my life changes in it and I you know I find so much more faith in what I do and I think without if I hadn't got that faith that I'd already established within my life I would find it very hard to find faith in other people and also for them to find faith in me. And I look at it now with building I Am Sound is that I've built a team out of pure faith alone. Like everybody that, I don't go and find anyone. People that come to me have had faith in my vision and my idea and gone, yeah, I'd like to see that too. And we then join because we've got a resonance. We've got the connection of, of faith. We've got this trust that what we're building is for something greater and stronger. And I feel like I used to try so hard to try and get people to like me or to want them to trust me. or And then I gave that up and I realized that I needed to trust me 
I needed to trust other people. And when I did, my whole life changed. So everything that you're saying is, I resonate with it so much because I'm having the same experience yeah. with the words faith and trust. Yeah. And it's just a stronger, it's a different place to come from. I feel a much stronger place within myself to come from when I've got faith. And somebody interviewed me a while ago and said, what would be the scariest thing for you? And I said, losing my faith. Of course, there's nothing to live for after that. Exactly. And that's what I feel now is I think all I've got left. I've got, there's a lot of things I've got in my life. I've got great connections. I've got good people coming. Oh, got good people coming. I've got, you know, incredible people around me. But all of it depends on how much I believe in it and how much faith I have in it. And every day I have to wake up with a little bit more faith than yesterday. And, and that has helped me to build what this is. And I just, I, I want to put it out into the world where at the minute no one's got faith in anything. They've got no trust. When it comes, uh, it, it, uh, the, the next word attached to this faith is mm. confidence mm. or self-confidence. Yeah. You get a lot of that when you're teaching. Mm. Uh, when someone is lacking confidence in themselves, uh, how the hell do you find self-confidence? I tell them self-confidence doesn't exist. It's a it's a it's a useless term. It really is. <laughs> um, but if you really have a set of beliefs that completely invade your your everyday perception of life, that that already is ninety uh, percent of what people call self-confidence. Mm -hmm. When you give yourself to your idea yeah. and you stop lo uh, looking at yourself, you look at the idea. Mm, nice. um, and, and that's, uh, love is one of those powerful words that, that, that you see it. Because by the way, I came to that out of, out of anger and hate. Mm. Uh, after... 20 years of seeing the patterns of Lebanon and Palestine and Iraq and Rwanda and Bosnia and Chechnya, all those wars, hardly year, a few years apart, the endless cycle of the same mistakes repeated, millions of people dying from war, uh, and then realizing uh, that I had to use my music to make life better. Not just for people to say, oh, great, nice flute player, but actually to, to, to help uh, organizations through raising their profile, raising funds for them, to make me feel that the music had its roots in life and could make other things um, stronger. Um, um, I, f I founded my first charity called Towards Humanity, and we had a big concert at Albert Hall, uh, including Israel, uh, P Palestine, Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, wow. and Jordan. Um, and it was a massive uh, thing. But all that grew out of frustration and anger at, at, at what I was seeing. Mm. And then it wasn't until two, three years later when I was feeling so exhausted, because anger eats you. It eats you alive. It kills you. It makes you sick. You know, I started to see this, um, hey, wait a minute, maybe if I kind of do things out of love, a, a conscious choice, um, love is a more, sus it is a sustainable energy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that, that l the way love works is just like a muscle. You exercise a muscle, it gets stronger. Yeah, yeah, it's so yeah. true. Uh, the more you love, the more capable you are of loving. Mm -hmm. And the less, less you love, the more detached you are from being able to feel it's anything in your life. Mm -hmm. It's just like a, a muscle that grows lame. So exercises love makes it stronger, mm -hmm. makes it more real, makes you trust it more, makes you believe that other people want it and will respond to it more. And if that's the basis of any work that you do, you're, uh, it's on a higher level, mm. whether it's music or not. The daily acts of discipline towards love is going to strengthen that muscle yeah. for you. Yeah. And like you're into meditating now. Mm. I'm just starting that journey very recently. Oh, we can meditate together. Yeah. We can do that. 
We could do that off. We might even do a video. That would be good, actually. There's a whole world going in my head now. Of what well, we could if do you pour together. that energy into the breath and, yeah. and, and how it, it um, works with everything mm -hmm. we do. Yeah, it's powerful. Well, I want to say, first and foremost, I'm loving talking to you, but I am conscious of time as well. Yeah, okay. um, there's so much that you've packed into that, which I really okay. appreciate and I love. Um, there's going to be people out there going to want to know more about you. <laughs> where do they find you? What, where can we um, go to hear well, more I'm about on, you? Um, I'm on Facebook and Twitter and all that. And mm -hmm. I've got my website, wisampostani.com. Mm -hmm. I've got my YouTube channel, which I'm not very good at promoting. <laughs> and in fact, uh, out of all of the things, I would like people to subscribe to my YouTube channel mm -hmm. because if I post uh, things, recordings, uh, concerts, you know, they, they appear there. Um, and can I just say that uh, the work that you're doing surrounding social media, mm -hmm. I'm completely excited about I've been telling everyone around me that <laughs> the currency of the future mm -hmm. is real life. Yeah, it really is. I think people are going to move away from, what's the word, virtual reality mm -hmm. yeah. and be quite happy with reality. And I've noticed it sometimes, you know, with the pandemic, um, we were all into live streaming and recording everything to, mm -hmm. because we couldn't have live audiences. So technology really showed us a, a, a way forward with our creativity in mm -hmm. these difficult times. But recently, I've turned off the microphone and I've turned off the video. Yeah. And we've just had a small concert with living, breathing people. With life itself. Yeah. And... Uh, of course, you're addicted to one thing. Well, if I can get 3,000 people to see it, isn't it better than 50 people seeing it? Mm -hmm. Yes, but remember that by switching off everything and making the moment really alive, mm -hmm. um, uh, you put a different energy into the moment. Yeah, it's more intimate. It's more intimate. Yeah. Uh, and I think a, a rediscovery of real life, mm -hmm. um, I think is the future. And I think uh, people are going to be, save themselves. I've taken social media off my phone Great. about four months ago mm -hmm. and I feel totally different. Yeah, it makes a big difference when you go to pick up your phone and realize there's nothing for you to look at and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> of <laughs> course I will use lot. it mm -hmm. and I will use it, but I'm not going to be used by it and I'm not, uh, I'm going to, that's different. Powerful. Yeah. Well, that's another one for the tribe. Thank, Thank you so much. So good luck with <laughs> all your work, the whole team. Thank you. And thanks for your ears and your patience and your uh, maybe some of your love. <laughs> uh, I don't care about your love as much as me giving it to you. Thank you so much. Well, well it's definitely I don't care. received. That's my priority. Definitely. And I'm sorry about all the hard questions. <laughs> But I like, I just, I know that there's more. There's just a depth. More, that I just more. feel a depth talking to you. And I, yeah, you know. sometimes we do wind up talking about general things. Yeah. But it's important not to lock into uh, detail sometimes yeah. because it makes you short sighted. This is the, th the whole reason about not researching people is because if they want to know more about you, they can Google you. Like it's there already. Yeah. But I feel I have a different way of interviewing and I, people call them Nat Chats, which is cool. It's just like we're just chatting and it's me and it's them and there's a different energy. But there's also, a, I think there's a different approach when you do an interview. It can get quite, um, it can get boring. And yeah. I just don't it's like watching stage, interviews. No, yeah. I like watching chats because then they can go in any direction. Yeah. So thank don't, you for joining a Nat Chat. I really appreciate it. We love you loads and uh, all the details will be underneath the video the way you can find, I uh, know, oh shouldn't be touching this. This is, see, this is the first video, so I'm going to stay away. I'm learning where the microphone is, but I will do it again. I will say thank you very much for watching this. Go and check out whatever you need to about this conversation. Dig deeper and yes, don't do social media. We don't do social media. Come off it. That would be the best thing you could do if watching this and go and find your love. So thank you for watching I Am Sound. Check us out at iamsoundacademy.com. And uh, yeah, you can't find us on social media, I'm afraid. Bye for now. <laughs>